It seems like we've only had about three months of life being normal since 2017. All PC parts being in stock, you could go to your local retailer and pick anything up in store while getting sneezed on by a stranger or touching a box that had been coughed all over without second guessing any part of that experience. But now we're here in 2021, Razer's making RGB masks to protect against a deadly virus, AMD CPUs are harder to get than Intel ones, and Micro Center is shipping stuff with Amazon Prime. It all went horribly wrong. When? Will it ever get better? A lot of what's going on feels incredibly reminiscent of the shortages that were happening back in 2017, with the crypto market driving GPU prices through the roof. RX 480s were $250 as the norm, and Vega cards could hit nearly a grand if you weren't paying attention. First up is the ever sought after RX 480, and if you're looking for one of these, I wish you the best of luck. Finding an RX 480 at this point that isn't horrifically marked up should prove to be an almost Herculean task, which makes a whole lot of sense. But this this is honestly different. The shortages that we're seeing today aren't to blame on any single instance. Crypto miners are responsible for some of the shortage, but not all of it. Production difficulties on AMD and Nvidia side is again, also part of it, but not the full story. And scalpers on eBay are making money hand over fist, but they're the symptom rather than the actual disease. And prices look to only be increasing rather than leveling out, which is going to happen regardless of whether or not there are any shortages in the first place. It's a multifaceted problem that doesn't have a singular solution that will alleviate the choke points. And then the answer to the question of when will it get better is one part Never, and one part in about three to six months. The stress of not knowing is almost enough to lose one's hair over. Thankfully, we have today's video sponsor to assist with that. Our friends, today's video is brought to you by Keeps. Now, I don't know if you know this, but two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. And as I just cross the 30 thresholds, I'm always thinking about it. And the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still got hair left like I do. You used to have to go to the doctor's office for your hair loss prescription. But now, thanks to Keeps, you can visit a doctor online and get your hair loss medication delivered right to your home. They make it easy and deliver your medication every every three months so you can say goodbye to pharmacy checkout lines and awkward doctor's visits. And Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss products out there. You may have tried them before, but probably never for this price. And Keeps treatments typically take between four to six months to see results, so it's important to act fast. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you'll save. So find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and why over 100,000 men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention medication. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com forward slash UFD or click the link in the video description to receive 50% off your first order. Again, that's keeps.com forward slash UFD. So let me break the two different answers of never and a specific timeline down for you. The never portion is the idea that there's some sort of homeostasis in the market that we're supposed to return to. Unfortunately, things such as an expired exemption on tariffs for PC components, such as GPUs, now means that regardless of whatever price Nvidia quoted you for that RTX 3080, is no longer relevant. Asus, MSI, and a lot of the other big players have already announced that their prices are going up, and there's not much that can be done there. When they have to pay an extra 25% on the product before it can even get into your hands, that leads to it being expensive kind of permanently. It's possible that some of the tariffs will get adjusted by the new US administration, but it likely won't happen soon with the pandemic taking their primary focus. And it's been reported that it's going to take some time before we get any shift or explicit announcement on the tariffs and that they're just being evaluated. The increases in pricing isn't just a lack of supply from overwhelming demand, it's institutional now. And that's definitely a big difference from the mining days. Now, on the other hand, the shortage side of things, AMD, Nvidia, Intel, as well as other major players have all committed to the notion that they're working on it. AMD just had their Q4 earnings call and stated that they anticipate some sort of an increase in production in the second half of 2021. So from their estimation, we're about four to five months out. Nvidia has also said that they expect things to be better by the end of Q1, which for them is April. But as can be gleaned from AMD's earnings report, they're also selling a heck ton of CPUs and GPUs, like almost a record amount. It's not as if they're not available. They're hitting and exceeding sales records, which means that truly, as Nvidia said at the beginning of this whole shortage thing, that demand is just exceptional. 
a large portion of this is that we've kind of been stuck on the same cards that we were back in 2017. The RTX 20 series from NVIDIA was a stopgap generation, as was the RX 5000 series. Modest gains, unexceptional pricing, and kind of nothing revolutionary. It appears like that's changed with the new launches, and so a ton of people are upgrading. But we also know that's not completely it either. There's also been reports of chip packaging shortages that don't even allow full computers to get made right now because of supply chain issues. GDDR6 production is also getting stifled, so the GPUs are having a hard time getting made. So it appears they're selling more than ever, but they can't produce as much as they normally would be able to. And that is also squeezing the market because of them not being able to produce last generation cards as effectively either. This wouldn't be as bad if we could get our hands on a discounted RX 5700 XT or a 2080 Super, but the production line issues leads to those cards being sparse and gangly as well. Back in 2017, you could still get 480s on the market even though the 580s were out. But that's not the full part of the story either. It's time to talk about the elephant in the room. Crypto mining. Despite having a couple of bumps up in Bitcoin pricing over the last two years, we haven't seen anything like the super profitable days back at the end of 2017. At current rates without taking electricity costs into account, my 584 gig should be bringing in about $3.16 per day. That's almost a dollar more than mining the coin on my 1060. But as I mentioned in our video last month on whether mining is coming back, the truth is that it does appear to be having a resurgence. Not just for the meme investments like Dogecoin, but these new cards can mine things more effectively at lower power consumption and the price of the currencies are going up. However, the bad news I have for all of you is that even though AMD and Nvidia expect to somehow catch up with the demand towards the middle part of this year, that won't happen if mining gets even more profitable. There's nothing preventing another run on cards like we experienced back then. With the trend of increasing profitability, I've been noticing that plenty of people are reopening their interest in it, whether that's due to the profitability alone or that they're trying to heat their house in the middle of winter right now, or because they're bored at home in quarantine, it's hard to completely say. However, I will say that it's possible we're at the beginning of a new surge, which would shift the estimates of things being back to normal in June to more like 2022. It's not a guarantee, but I will say that the mining interest that's happening currently with miners grabbing a ton of cards isn't anything like the 2017 boom just yet. So don't think that if we got rid of the miners, everything would be back to normal. And unfortunately, that's kind of the best answer that can be given on the current state of the PC market. There's no single choke point, so there's no easy solution. There's not much that can be done to solidify the supply chains while also satiating demand, keeping the prices down, and preventing another crypto mining boom. The clear thing is that we're in the thick of it, and three to six months is the return at a minimum, a year or more if things escalate. It's a tough conclusion, but I'd rather be wrong due to saying learn to hold out rather than saying it's going to end soon and have it drag on. I think 2021 is definitely going to be the year of sniping deals when they come up, participating in Newegg's lottery system, and unfortunately for a lot of you, buying secondhand because that's what's available and affordable. Which, if you're looking for a great secondhand parts video on a budget, I'd recommend you just get subscribed to OzTalks Hardware. He just did a video on a $100 gaming PC he picked up. It's a great watch and is the kind of content that will likely be prevalent for a while. So, at the end of this, I'm sorry. PC building is in another rough year. But, you don't have to let your hairline suffer because of it. Don't forget that today's video is brought to you by Keeps. You can go to keeps.com forward slash UFD to save 50% off your first order with them. Again, keeps.com forward slash UFD. And that is the unfortunate end of this video. Looks like PC market's gonna be rough for a while. Let me know what you're thinking down below in the comments. Are you anticipating not being able to build your PC this year? Are you holding out in hopes that something's come available? Are you thankful for new technologies that are being introduced like Newegg's lottery system or EVGA's Q system? And I hate the fact that I called it new technology because you know they should have had that the entire time, but let me know what your strategy is for this year and whether or not you disagree with me down below in the comments. While you're down there on that side of the YouTube setup, hit the like button too if you enjoyed the video. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.